Welcome everyone to this video. My name is Nico and we're here on the Surf Center channel. This is one of many sail introductions. Uh, today we're here with the RS Flight Evo 4 and Enrico Marotti next to me. Enrico is one of the main developers for New Pride and uh, he has also won actually the last World Cup uh, we've had in Japan. So congr congratulations for that. Thanks. Um, and of course, uh, credit to you for, for this achievement, but also I know you've put a lot of work into the gear that allows you to also achieve these results. And uh, today we want to talk about the, the latest uh, Flight Evo sale. Now on Surf Center we have um, all the latest um, yeah, sales in stock actually right now. So um, if you're interested, uh, please reach out to us, let us know. Also let us know in the comments if you have any questions. Me or Enrico will be happy to answer them uh, in the comments. Um, there's the, of course, there's the free flight, there is the V8 flight, which we all have available as well as this one. T tell me about the sale. What is the, like, what is new about the sale? Because obviously the sale becomes a little bit better every year. You work on it. There's, uh, yeah, there's changes that make it more stable, make it faster. Tell me what, what's new about it. First, I want to say thanks. And I want to say thanks on the opportunity to introduce the sales to, to the people out there and, uh, to all the people that are watching and like you say every year we try to be better we try to improve the sale and uh, we try to find the uh, areas where we can where we can improve uh, all of the last year we had quite good foil sales and uh, our riders all around the world like them a lot but uh, even even then when we knew they are good we robert and uh, me together with the other riders we try to find areas where we can, uh, we, where, we, where, we, where we can do it better, and where we can find improvement. Again, these sales, I, I must say, and it's honest, there are huge improvements since last year, uh, because uh, on each sale size, uh, we, we we approach individually, and we try to to fix what was a problem last year, or what could be better. For example, 7.7 seven, uh, from last year was 7.8 and I know it was flapping in the top, so we fixed this and this year there is no more flapping, which means that uh, there, is, uh, there is less drag. We open a bit the mid leech to have a bit more acceleration and to have a, a bit less of a backhand. So because the mid leech would be the area between yes. these Sa two somewhere, buttons? Somewhere, yeah, these two buttons, we open it a little bit to have a bit better acceleration and to have a touch less this backhand that we, we had a lot. Last year, R90, R78, it was the sales that you had a lot of backhand that you had to fight. And uh, it was hard to get rid of it, but still have the low end good but we managed to do it. We also, we also put the, the clue for the boom a bit lower. And actually uh, this top, top clue is the clue that was low on last year. So on 7.7 and 8.7, I'm using the top one, but on smaller sales, 6.7, 5.7 and 5.1, I'm using the lower one. Uh, the point with this sale 7.7 and 8.7 is that uh, has a bit different profile than 5.7 and 6.7 because you need, you're sailing it in different conditions. With big sails, you want the glide, you want that they have power in low end, and also you need some high end performance, no? So it's performance are, performance are, they demand a lot from the sail, but we change the profile that is a, a bit more slippery through the air, but the size gives you this power to have a low end, and this slippery gives you ability to go fast when it's windy and when you are in a high end with, with, with the gusts or with the wind. So basically it's a bit different profile that is a profile that is a bit maybe more sensitive than 5767, but you are sailing in conditions where it's not so hard to sail. So 67 and 57 has a bit more profile that is more forgiving and more, much more stable. And that you need in these conditions when you sail that sail. And 8777 you sell in light, so you need sail that is slippery and has good low end, but can can take good some gas. And this is as exactly this this sail. So when you talk about the profile, Enrico, you obviously mean um, how the wind uh, shapes around the sail, basically when it enters the mast, and then yeah, it has to go away around the sail. And uh, you can have different profiles, right? You of can course. have it deeper, more flat. For example, a sail without any cambers would have a super flat 
profile. Yes, and it will also be uh, really sensitive to change in the wind because it doesn't keep the profile, it has uh, only batons. When we have cambers, it really keeps the profile that you want all the time. But basically, yeah, you can change the profiles and get what you want. For example, the deeper profile or when the deepest point is a bit more to the front, it's more forgiving one. When the deepest, deepest point is a bit more to the back, it's more faster one, but really sensitive and you need to always sell it on a good angle and so on. So it's many things to play and uh, many things to do to make it better, but we were working really hard. We put a lot of efforts. We tried the sails in many different conditions with uh, many riders and we are really confident that the sails are good and actually already all the guys that have the sails, they say that the sails are, are good and that they like them a lot. So yeah, it's it's really nice to hear that, and it's uh, yeah, it's just, it gives you some confidence in your work, and uh, you just know that you have the system how you will make it better even next year. People always wonder how we manage to make it better every year, but it's really easy. We work a lot, and that's the answer. We just work a lot, and with a lot of hours on the water, with a lot of changes, with many things you can try, we get. A bit better sail every year and that's the secret of it. Yeah. Obviously this is uh, one of the few first sails uh, that there are and um, I was lucky enough to try it already a bit the last days and you've also been uh, sailing on, on it for quite some time and what you say is what I feel on the water and um, that's of course always good so the theory or what you tested in the prototype actually made it into the production sail um, that's a good thing and uh, yeah my feeling is that they're a bit easier and especially the 7.7 or let's say when you talk about the bigger sails you mean the 8.7 and the 7.7 yeah, seven, basically seven. they feel uh, they feel like they have a bigger wind range so I don't go get uh, uncontrolled as easily anymore. Yeah, this was our main goal because we knew that uh, a bit of a weakness from last year's sail was that in a high wind the sail is a bit hard to sail and that 9.0 was really really powerful so actually people shouldn't be afraid of new 8.7 because it's not the sail from last year 9.0. We reduced a little bit the size. Uh, we, we did many things to make it more user friendly. And people shouldn't be scared to take 8.7 as their big, big sail because the sail is really, really good. And it will not be too big so early at 9.0 9, 9 was. Yeah. Uh, it's actually really, really good sail and it will have a big range. So when you unroll a new Pratt sail, what you notice is uh, beside, of course, uh, the nice looking design, um, will be the little bit stronger material in the lower leech bottom area, which is an area that is more likely to, to get damaged on your board or whatever. So it's very protected. You have the mast, um, uh, the, the mast leaf in the bottom that is uh, protected as well. Um, you have your seven battens and four cambers on this racing sail. Um, one nice thing about new pride sails is of course the, um, the clip to adjust the batten tension maybe Enrico you can show us real quick yeah, how that works it's uh, it's really user friendly because you just uh, open it super simple on the beach even when the sail is rigged you can reduce the tension you can add tension uh, depends what your cell needs now when we speak about the batten tension I can say what I use on these sails so on uh, batten number six that's the crossing batten uh, I use this, some decent tension, yes, that's that one. I use some decent tension, like it need, there is, th this is important button that needs to keep our profile and in, for that needs to have some tension that, that you feel that you are putting it. The lower one, it's that uh, rotation of the sail always starts from lower button and you, if you kill the lower button, your, rotate, your sail will not rotate so good. So if you have always problem with the rotation, it means that maybe you have too much tension on the bottom button or your boom is too short. Your, for example, now it's a bit short. We need two more CM. So when you rotate the sail, at one point the button is straight and now it's in a shape. So when it's, when it's straight, it needs, needs space to be straight. And it gets clean. longer. Yeah. Yes, it gets longer. So for example, here I will extend boom a bit more, two more CM and you need to take care that bottom button is not overkilled for good rotation. Yeah. So to get back to the buttons, Crossing one, I put a lot. Bottom one, a bit less, and I check for rotation. Here, I put a bit less than on crossing one, and here I put nothing, and all up, I put nothing. Uh, if you want that your, for example, when you foil, that your nose goes a bit more down, then you put a bit more tension up, but then you are also closing the sail. So you need to take care of it, but this is actually how I use it, and this is some base setup that probably yeah. most of the riders are using. So on this one, you say nothing. 
you put nothing and what you just did that was basically no tension there was no tension yes, yes. I, I, we can make it a bit less but it's okay then of course we have our tuning points in the top of the sail the minimum and maximum which generally gives you a good indication of how much downhole tension you should put right exactly that's a perfect indication because it, it doesn't mean it's necessary like this you know every guy has his own technique his individual person and he may prefer something different so this is indicators and you can go if you want a bit above the max or, and a bit under the max you know you always try to find where is your very where, where, where you like it or also you can go a bit under the minimum or a bit um, above the minimum so it's just the indication you can, you have to try a few things and then you use how you like it me personally i like with a lot of downhole <laughs> and uh, yeah the more downhole you put you're faster but the sail gets a bit less stable no? and that, so that's probably also what, um, because we use the sails really powered up so we always want to be fully yes. powered up. So we want a lot of release, yeah. right? So when the gust hits, uh, the sail just keeps opening exactly. and keeps uh, moving forward. Exactly. But also I would suggest people to be closer to max than closer to mean. Because most of the time people, I see them on the beach, amateurs, they don't downhole the sail as they should. You know, Don't yeah. be afraid to downhole your sail. You can go close to max and nothing will happen the sail will be okay it, it's designed that way you know it's yeah. every time when we test it we test it with a lot of downhole so don't be afraid to put downhole okay. it's uh, what it's needed for the sail to be fast yeah so that's for the downhole and then um, i would like to add that yeah most of the time for the outhaul tension we use quite a lot of outhaul tension so yes, we use from side. salam sails that the a sail yeah. touches the boom but with the foil sails that, that's not really yeah. the case on anymore the, on the fin before i always taught my friends and people that i was explaining something that the maximum you put out hold it's that it just touches the boom so you know where you are then when you release you see how much is touch and you all the time know where you are you know and this is how you trim your sail when it's the fin sail but with the foil sail we cannot do that and it's as you say it's true we all the time like a lot of out hold and uh, yeah especially from last year's sales they like a lot of outhaul and a lot of downhaul this year's sale you can this year's sales you can you can gain a lot with releasing a little bit of outhaul in a low end last year you you didn't gain much you just went a bit slower if you yeah, release yeah. a little bit so this year actually if you release a little bit you get but a little bit means one cm on a finger you know it's really little one and a half oh, yeah. two and then you get some low end when it's a light wind that, that you can have power to start planing to go in a hole of wind or something like that but once you are full power you are flying good you plane easy you need to pull the out hole because you want that release no you want that release because on a foil we don't have much resistance in the water and we, we don't need so big power from our sail we just need actually power to plane but once we are planing we would like to have two square meter less if it's possible <laughs> So this is why you need to put a lot of outhaul and a lot of downhaul. Just to mention who the sail is for, because this is our, let's say, top of the line racing sail. This really is for the people who want the maximum performance and um, yeah, are willing to compromise a bit on, let's say, maneuverability and the ease of use. Yeah, exactly. I would say ease, uh, ease of use, because once you rig it, you have cambers, you have, you know, you, it's a bit different than if you just take some speedster or something, you just put a mast, you rig it and you go, you know, yeah. but uh, yeah it's a uh, it's a bit more demanding but people shouldn't be scared of for example if you sail already for a few years on a v8 and you like it and you sail in a gusty place there is no reason why why you shouldn't maybe try even some some slalom slalom sail you know definitely it's the sail for the high-end performance you can get there is nothing better out there but uh, people shouldn't be as scared of trying it and yeah actually the gear gets easier and easier and easier and i see out my home spot it's a big home spot with many people i see people being scared of trying the racing sale but once they try it they love it you know yeah. because we put a lot of work and a lot of effort for them to be also fast but also user friendly and easy to use so yeah, yeah I, you will definitely like them that's but a good that's a good closing yeah. statement because uh yeah, you said it's the best one you you can get and i feel the same way i've tried them and for me Gear Pride has always been, uh, yeah, sort of the best, and uh, I think it's the best you can get right now. Uh, at least uh, we two would have this opinion. Yeah. Um, 
yeah, be sure to subscribe to the channel if you want to learn more about uh, yeah, all sorts of sales and also from other brands because um, yeah, there's more content coming on here. Thanks so much for tuning in. Thanks Enrico for joining me. Thank you very much for an opportunity to speak about the sales and yeah, thanks for having me and big hi to all of the watchers at home.